What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Pixel OS Official 1 and this is the 29th April 2022 build. This is of course based on Android 12 L and you can see the notes and stuff here it says that ANX camera is pre-included over here, the version 204, so that's awesome. Also, this ROM is based on MIUI 13 firmware. And if you have no idea how to actually flash this ROM, you can check out the card or the description to actually flash this particular ROM or any other ROM out there for the Redmi Note 10 Pro. The best part about this ROM is downloading this ROM. The website actually looks awesome. And here you can see even the change logs and the instructions and stuff. The website is just amazing one of the best ROM downloading website that I have ever seen. So right now, let me just quickly show you the about section. This is how the about section looks like. We have the Android version showing as Android 12, but this is actually Android 12 L. And we have the security patch of latest April 5th, 2022, not quite May yet, because this is the 29th April 2022 build. It comes with the Vantom kernel pre-included. And of course, it says Pixel OS for Suite and 12.1 or the Android 12 L version. In the system panel, this is how it looks like. We have the developer options because I have enabled that. Also in the system updater, you can check for updates from right here. And in the gestures, we do get the quick tap action and that is the back tap over here. Also there is a swipe to take screenshot and that actually works perfectly fine. We also have the capture mode feature and stuff. If you want to enable those, you definitely can. And here in the system navigation gestures, we have the swipe to invoke assistant and stuff. Let me scroll down, we have the gesture indicator, but there is no pill bar customization, like you can't really change the thickness or the length of this pill bar over here. We have the two button and three button navigation as well. And in the three button navigation, you can invert the layout. We have the one handed mode. Then we have the quickly open camera and stuff and the press and hold power button action. You can customize that too. We have the enable advanced reboot option. That's great. And here, let me actually show you from the power menu, we do have this advanced option. If you tap on that, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Now we also get the long press power button toggle torch that actually works fine. If you scroll down more, we have the prevent ringing and the tap to sleep or the double tap to sleep over here. There is a live translate feature if you are gonna use that and we have the language and input section. There you will find Gboard as the default keyboard. Now this is how the home screen looks like for me. And yes, the ROM actually looks beautiful. We have the Google Now cards to the left. But this is a pixel launcher that you get by default but there is of course double tap to sleep on the status bar and double tap to wake too does work super fine no issues whatsoever also if you want to see the fingerprint scanner speed as you are noticing the fingerprint scanner works 100 percent of the time let me actually enable the always on display so that i can show you the always on display over here and this is how the always on display looks like and here let me just double tap and if you're noticing the lock screen clock looks beautiful and the font actually like becomes thicker whenever you are in the lock screen from the always on display as you're noticing and all the animations and stuff they should work super fine over here if you're noticing once i tap the fingerprint scanner if you're noticing the fingerprint scanner speed is blazing fast no issues whatsoever that i have faced with the fingerprint scanner at least there is the face unlock and once you're using the face unlock this is how it unlocks and you have to swipe up because I have changed the settings. And if you're noticing on the front camera, there is a bigger kind of black border right now. So if you're noticing that black border is quite thick when compared to other ROMs. So that will actually help in video calls or something like that. Right now, let's jump into the settings and I have to use this app lock, the Norton app lock that I have downloaded from Play Store. And I have been using that because there is no app lock in this particular ROM which kind of sucks because other ROMs do come with that feature. But then again, you do get the face unlock and the fingerprint scanner both options over here. You shouldn't worry about those. Now let's talk about the launcher stuff. We have the swipe up to actually get the app drawer and we have the searching option. You can search for any particular thing that you want to search and it has that universal search option. And in the quick setting panel, this is how it looks like. And on the home screen, the widgets and stuff are working fine. We also have the Android 12 L kind of animation. They look beautiful, I would say. And yes, all the Android 12 like kind of things are working great, like this calculator app and stuff. They should be working super fine, no issues whatsoever. Also talking about the quick setting panel, this is how it looks like. Now, let me tell you, in the quick setting panel, even in the light theme, the quick setting panel stays dark. It's like that Evolution X in K20 Pro. So that's how it is. I would say I would have loved to see the white kind of quick setting panel here, but that's not just present. Only the notification panel goes white whenever you are in the white theme. That's how it is. And talking about the quick toggles, yes, you can edit and add multiple toggles and everywhere the UI overall 
feels a lot more smoother in this Pixel OS. This is definitely very close to a Pixel experience. And here of course I have added the Wi-Fi, the mobile data and stuff and fault decoding and stuff. Everything is working great. No issues with that. The Bluetooth option is there and of course Bluetooth devices are working great too. We have the night light, the hotspot and stuff then the always on display toggle and we have the airplane mode the nearby shared the screen recorder is also there and it does this kind of animation whenever you are tapping on it if you're noticing the animation feels beautiful and we have the heads up toggle then the battery saver the do not disturb the data saver but i cannot simply find the dc dimming toggle over here even in the edit section i could not simply find the dc dimming toggle on this particular rom that's how it is the dc dimming i think is not present also the good thing is we get the anx camera by default over here so that's awesome and here, talking about the ANX camera, the experience overall is not that great because I have tried everything on this camera almost. Like, let me talk about the front camera selfies. So here, if you want to take a good quality picture or a good quality selfie, let me tell you, you have to be really, really steady with the shutter button whenever you're clicking the picture. This picture is quite good. If you're noticing, the details are pretty much there. And yes, this portrait selfie is actually looking good. But notice whenever I like try to take the selfies with the volume button, this is how it appears. The face like becomes blurry. This is actually way better, but let me show you the other ones. If you're noticing, the bloodiness is just like there and yeah, it is really a bad experience if you're taking selfies in low light. So yeah, this is what I do not like in this particular ANX camera that the selfie is coming out to be a lot shaky. And here, if you want to see the 61 megapixel mode and stuff, they should be working perfectly fine. I have tested those, no issues whatsoever. Also, there is a pro video mode. You can definitely do that. There is the 4K 30 FPS option. And of course, in the pro video section, you can customize the white balance, the shutter speed and ISO, etc. So yeah, pro video is actually working perfectly fine. Also, 1080p 60 FPS video, I have shot a couple of videos on this particular channel, of course. And yes, they are working perfectly fine on this ANX camera. But then again, the photos may come out to be shaky if you are not steady enough and there is a lot of low light. So that's what you need to remember. And of course, you can switch between lenses if you want to. This is the ultra wide angle lens. This is the normal wide angle lens and this is the 2x option. So everything is working fine, including with the super macro mode that is also working fine. If you're noticing the super macro is actually working perfectly great. So no issues whatsoever with all the lenses and stuff. But then again, if you are someone who takes a lot of selfies, I would suggest stick to ROMs like Havoc OS, which is based on Android 11. There you will get the most clarity out of your photo. Battery settings and here is how the battery settings looks like. We don't even have the battery temperature showing up option over here. That's how it is. It's very stock Android-ish. And we have the battery percentage enabling option over here, of course. And with the Aku battery, I have tested the battery and the fast charging and stuff is working fine. And I have got about nine hours of screen on time, which is good enough, I would say. And the screen off or the standby mode battery drain is quite a lot less, I would say. I can definitely say I have been enjoying the battery life on this particular ROM, no issues whatsoever. And in the health section, for me, my battery actually shows at 92%. The device is almost more than one year old, I think. So yeah, it's pretty decent battery health that I have over here. And with that, nine hours of screen on time should be decent on Android 12 L, of course. Now let's talk about the sound and vibration settings. This is how it looks like. By the way, the volume panel looks like this. And of course, you can expand the volume panel to these many options. And we have the link ringtone and vibration option. Then we have the vibrate for calls and stuff. If you scroll down more, we have the touch vibration, the screenshot sound, and we have the in-call vibration options. The Mi Audio Dirac is also present. And here you do get a huge amount of options. If you're noticing, a lot of Mi Audio headsets are there. And of course, I have been using it with the Utrition. The sound quality via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well was amazing. Also, there is a sound presets and you also get the bass reduction and stuff. Also, the bass booster is there and we have the select scene option so you can actually click customize the scenes i just put it to smart and the sound quality overall with the speakers with the mics everything has been really really awesome and we have the enable hi-fi option too if you have a really great pair of wired headsets you can definitely use this option now we also have the clear speaker option if you want to have that and the haptic feedback you can actually customize the level of the like vibration motor over here overall the in the ui there is a lot of haptic feedbacks even in the recent panel whenever you are swiping like to the apps it actually gives you a haptic feedback also whenever you are going back or something like that everywhere in the ui there is haptic feedback so yeah overall the haptic feedback of android 12 has been really awesome 
in this particular ROM. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have the adaptive auto brightness. Inside lock screen, we have the skip lock screen and stuff, then the device control, the double line clock and the ripple effect option is there. And we have the double tap to sleep, of course, on the lock screen. And here, if you scroll down more, we have the dark theme and stuff, the battery estimates, the icon manager is there. From here, you can enable the headset, Bluetooth headset icons, normal stuff. The live display option is there. And from here, we have the color calibration so you can control the RGB of the screen. Let me go back. We have the smooth display. Here we have the refresh rate kind of settings like the smooth display and stuff. Then the force refresh rate to 120 hertz option is there. So that's great. And let me actually show you here if I load this website. If you're noticing 120 FPS is working perfectly fine. So no issues whatsoever with the performance of this ROM. I have been really enjoying this ROM with high FPS. And overall in the UI, I did not face any kind of lags or stutters. And here we have the double tap to wake option and in the full screen apps of course we can like force some particular apps to full screen if you want to and from here you can change the color profile to boosted saturated or natural and there is the night light you can schedule it if you want to then there is the wallpapers and styles and from here of course you can change the wallpapers the themed icons options are there and in terms of the app grid we get up to five by five so that was pretty much it about the pixel os i would say this has been one of the most stock android experience that i have got but I'm kind of disappointed with the ANX camera over here because it takes those shaky kind of pictures and I don't really like that. But in terms of overall performance, I have had no issues whatsoever in this particular ROM and overall the UI has been really, really smooth. And even if you want to like have the split screen mode or something like that, like the split top mode that is actually working perfectly fine. If you're noticing, I can switch between apps just like this very easily and you can of course scale it like this. And once you go home, in the recent panel, actually the app stays together. This is the Android 12 well feature and it has been working perfectly fine here. And here are the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular ROM. So let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about this Pixel OS? I definitely feel this is one of the best ROMs that you can try on your Redmi Note 10 Pro if you are someone who likes to have the stock Android experience of Android 12 L. But if you are someone who uses like a lot of selfies or captures a lot of selfies, I won't suggest sticking to this ROM, at least if you're a ANX camera user. If you are using Gcam, it should be fine. And talking about the basic things like the safety net and stuff, yes, safety net passes right out of the box so you can use banking apps over here without any issues. Also, the DRM info stays as L1 so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p with no problems. Also talking about the IR Blaster present on the device, yes, the IR Blaster should be working great if you're noticing the air blaster is actually working perfectly fine here no issues on this particular rom so that pretty much wraps up this video guys on the pixel os for the redmi note 10 pro let me know in the comments what do you guys think give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye, -bye now